they do, how they're so callous, why are they like they are and we are like we are. I've given up trying to work it out. When HLS closes, everyone who works there can go and get psychiatric help, they can do what they want. As far as I'm concerned, they can all go and kill themselves. as you want because it makes no difference whatsoever. Take all the films, all the cameras you want, all the photographs, you couldn't care less. Yeah. All I want you to do is just keep these three words in your head at all times. We always win. That's all you need to remember. We always win. And when Hunter Dunn is closed, we move on to the next one and the next for the rest of our lives. Yes. And thank you so much for coming today. My total respect and admiration for all of you. Thank you. There's a couple more things. I just have to say that I feel very, very privileged to work with day in, day out some of the most exceptional people I have ever known who work seven days a week to close Huntington Life Sciences. The most exceptional people in the world. And the newspaper, because newspapers can write what they like. We're all bonded together with one common cause, to shut down Huntington Life Sciences. <laughs> There's only two types of people that matter. Those people who kill the animals at Huntingdon and are helping to keep it open, and those people trying to close it down. So when you're marching around and you see all these people with blank expressions or laughing, they don't count. Don't let them bother you. All that matters is the target. Keep going for it and destroy it. Yeah. And one message for Huntingdon Life Sciences. You cowards who work there, you can phone us up. This is what they did. They said, pass the electrodes, and they had a monkey. And we could hear that monkey screaming on the phone. Those are the people that work at Huntington Line Life Sciences. And I am going to be there the day that place is smashed to the ground. Don't think that kind of behavior makes any difference to us because it only makes us stronger. And you people that I'm looking at right now, you're exceptional, you're the best people in the world. You get out there and you fight them hard! We have the greatest legislation in the world to protect animals in laboratories. And remember that animals in laboratories, not laboratory animals, there's no such individual as a laboratory animal in the same way there was no such person as a slave. It's an individual who was unfortunate enough to be a slave and it's an individual unfortunate enough to be in a laboratory. They should be free! <laughs> As I said, we have the greatest legislation in the world to protect those animals. What does the Act actually say? It licenses white-coated sadists to inflict pain and suffering and distress and lasting harm on conscious living creatures. That's not my word, you can read it in the Act itself. Pain, suffering, distress and lasting harm. It says they can inflict that in three pain bandwidths. Mild, moderate, substantial. What's mild? What's moderate? What's substantial? I'll tell you what substantial pain is. It's a rabbit, or a cat, or a dog, or a monkey, alone. Alone without hope, alone without help, screaming, screaming. Screaming for help that doesn't come, and the only release is death. We have to wipe that 
evil from the face of this earth by whatever means. And let me make it quite clear. I am not campaigning for, I have no mandate for, no animal has ever said, Robin, we authorise you to compromise on our behalf. It's no to larger cages. It's no to gradual reduction. It's yes to no research on any individual, anywhere, whatsoever. And I say thank you very much to uh, Robin Webb. The next uh, speaker before we march is uh, from America, is a trauma surgeon, Dr. Jerry Blasak. <laughs> I can't believe I have to follow Robin Webb. <laughs> I have long offered, along with my colleague, Dr. Ray Greek, who's been here before as well, to debate these silly men and others like them. And even after being presented with enough evidence and data to fill Westminster Abbey, they continue to insist that animal research is helping save human lives. But it's not. We know it's not. It's directly harming and killing humans by the thousands every day. These pseudoscientists refuse to debate us. And when we do beg them and trick them into debating us, they use the same old lies, the same old exaggerated claims, the same old rhetoric they've used for years. Because they cannot argue, they cannot argue the fact that in 2004, animal experimentation is the worst possible strategy for curing human disease or promoting human health. Why do we have to do this? Why can't the scientists see the error of their ways? I did. Oh, they can see it. They can see it. But they're making way too much money. Too many of these frauds enjoy driving their expensive cars or socializing at their country clubs to ever come forward in the numbers needed to make the necessary change. Most physicians, I'm embarrassed to say, live lives frightened and scared, wimps of the healthcare field, privately knowing that animal experimentation doesn't work, but too afraid to step up to the plate and do the right thing. But privately, they know the truth. They know animal experimentation does nothing, and I mean nothing, to help cure disease or save lives. Smash the section. Thank you. Okay, if we march in about two minutes, I'll just say this first, something very interesting is, People always say, why do we come to Cambridge and why don't we do things through the political process? I'll give you an example of that. Jerry asked every local MP in this area to come and debate with him, to come and talk with him, and not even one of those people could even be bothered to reply to him. We take, we take direct action because it works. It's as simple as that. If going through the political system works, we would do that. Whatever it takes to save animals, whatever works, we'll do it. What we're doing now is proving to work. Look at the places that have closed in the last few years. Look at the speed campaign. Stop the building of the lab out here. That's why we're here, because it works. We wouldn't do it otherwise. All we're interested in is saving animals, and we will always do what works. If that's unpopular, we shouldn't apologize for that. We should stand up and say, we will do what it takes to save the animals. If you like that, great. If you don't, tough love. It's as simple as that.